Hi, my name is Dan, and this video supports my online sushi course on Udemy.com, and you can learn more about the video lectures in the link below. In this lecture, you're going to learn how to break down an entire salmon and prep it for sushi. And to do this, I suggest using both the Deba and the Hollow Ground Slicer. This is a very affordable knife and does an excellent job. So if you plan on filleting salmon often, it's a great investment. The way I'm going to show you how to fillet might come across as being unorthodox, but I believe this is one of the more effective techniques for beginners to pick up, in terms of speed and efficiency. It's also much easier to learn than the traditional method, which can split the meat if it's handled too aggressively, and if that happens, it's tough to cut it for sushi purposes. To start, always dry out the fish as much as you can on both sides before you start filleting. This way, the fish won't slide around so you'll be safer to work with. And also, it would be a good idea for you to request your fishmonger to scale it first, to make this process less messy at home. The next, you'll want to remove the head with the deba. And to do this, first position the fish with the head on the left side and belly up. Then lift up the pectoral fin and cut at an angle behind it until you hit the spine. Then flip it over and repeat the same cut on the other side. Except this time, once you hit the spine, use the heel of your blade and give it a hard thrust to cut it through. You can use your other hand to help. And the reason why you want to cut at an angle is because you can maximize the yield and leave little meat behind. And you can tell by the V-shaped cut, this was done properly. Now position the fish so the head side is on the right with the belly side up, and have the fish as close to the edge of the counter as possible. This is because you'll need space for your cutting hand so you can slice at an angle. And make sure to cut above the spine. This is very important. And once you're set up, you'll want to run the blade all the way through in a fast slicing motion, and hold the belly flap with your other hand as you cut. And after the first fillet comes off, the second step is easier. But this time, you'll want to cut just below the spine, but try to angle the blade slightly upwards. This way you can get a cleaner cut and leave as little meat possible on the backbone. And as you can see, there's really not much meat left on the bones when you fillet it this way. And this part can be scraped off so don't throw it away. You can cut this into smaller pieces by cutting between the discs. This is softer and much more blade friendly. Now what I typically do is spoon the meat off the bone, but be very careful not to scrape off the pin bones. These will run about halfway down the fish right next to the spine. And it's very important to scrape towards the tail so you don't go against the pin bones. And you can do the same to the tail portion, but this part doesn't have any pin bones, so you can be a little bit more aggressive with the spoon and try to get as much meat off as you can. Afterwards, you'll be left with a few ounces of salmon tartare, and you can use this to make items like spicy salmon rolls or hand rolls. So on to the fillets. First, you'll need to trim out the belly tag along with the fin, and this is where you'll need to use your Deba knife again. And on one of the fillets, you'll need to do a bit more trimming. So start off by cutting off the rear fin that was left behind, and then turn the fillet around and slice off the white main brain from one end to the other. If you have a sharp knife, this is very easy to do. It might look a little difficult in the video, but that's because I'm standing about 3 feet away from the camera with my arms totally stretched out to get this angle. But if you're standing over the fish, it's much easier to do. Next, you'll need to use tweezers to remove the pin bones and these will run about halfway down the fillet. 
and especially if you can start from the very front because you need to pull the bones in the same direction as the head so that way you don't rip the meat going backwards and there are always a couple of bones hiding in the very front so start with those first Once you get those out, you can start working on the rest by holding down the fish with one hand and pulling with the other. Again, make sure to pull in the direction of the head because if you go the other way, the fillet will rip apart. And sometimes as you're pulling, the bones might snap in half, so just remember to go back and pull the rest. And once you get all the bones out, it's a good idea to always run your finger along it just to make sure you got every one. Next, I'm going to show you how to prep the fillets for sushi, but keep in mind that this is what I think is the most practical method for home users, because many restaurants will prepare it differently depending on their operation. To start, cut a small piece off from the front so you end up with a straight edge. Next, measure out each cut roughly the width of 4 fingers or about 3 inches across. And the logic is because this will be the length of the nigiri that you'll learn how to cut later. And it's a good idea to portion these into smaller pieces for those at home. This way you can freeze them and only take out what you need at a time. And also, by leaving the skin and the ribs on, this will act as an extra protective layer while it's in the freezer. And I'll show you how to remove this part later in the course. Now if you plan on using a lot of salmon, then you can portion it into larger pieces like the way I'm measuring it out. And this is typically how it's done in some restaurants before it's frozen. And once you're done pushing the fillets, you'll end up with a couple of tail pieces. And these are normally a bit more fibrous, so they're usually cut into small pieces for sushi rolls or other applications. And remember the two funny pieces that was cut off? Well, those can also be cut into smaller pieces once the bones and skin is removed. Next, you'll need to prep them for the freezer. Normally I use deli paper or paper towels to cover each piece, then wrap it with plastic film. This way, the paper will help prevent the meat from getting freezer burn and also help absorb some of the water when you're ready to defrost it. And here's something to remember. Unlike other fish, salmon freezes very well and maintains its quality for a longer period compared to other fish. And that's because it doesn't have as much of a drip issue after it's been frozen and it maintains its texture, color, and flavor quite well. And if you're somebody that wants to eat raw fish every week and don't want the hassle of buying fresh fish all the time, then freezing salmon fillets is really the way to go because they'll last for several weeks in the freezer before the quality starts to diminish. This isn't something you can do with tuna or white fish like snappers without the use of an IQF freezer and color treatment. Now I know that for many of you, purchasing entire salmon and fillet at home isn't really practical. So instead, I suggest if you trust your local fishmonger, it's a better idea to ask them to scale the fish and fillet it for you. And then you can use the information you learned from this lecture to portion it and prepare it for the freezer once you get home. But if you're a fisherman and catches your own salmon or you don't trust the sanitary standards at your fish shop, then I hope this video is helpful if you decide to fillet yourself. And one last thing, usually I don't always advocate freezing fish for raw consumption because this is dependent on the species of fish. But in the case of salmon, I recommend freezing it for sushi, for both farm-raised and especially wild fish. And that's because they're known to carry parasites like anisakis and tapeworms. Although farm fish are less likely to get infected, there's still a possibility since most are raised in open pens. But generally, for other fish, it varies from species to species. For example, tuna is not on the list. And if you want more information on parasite destruction, I made a PDF file that you can download where there is much more information on this topic. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is actually a preview of my sushi course on Udemy. If you want to learn more about preparing salmon for sushi, there are more information in the course that shows you how to break it down even further for nigiri and sashimi applications. Also, there are over 40 video lectures that cover many of the fundamentals, such as learning how to prepare sushi rice, how to cut different vegetables, how to make different types of sushi rolls, and much more. And aside from just video lectures, there are also PDF files of recipes and resources you can download. So if you'd like to learn more, use the link down below.